I had a wonderful discussion in part 1 of this podcast. If you have not watched it, please click this link. Here is part 2 of the podcast for you. Okay, okay, so if I follow Satvik, okay? I mean, I like your principles a lot, so I'm going to say that okay, you know, I'm close to mother nature. Fruit is the healthiest dessert. I have replaced that with already that, okay? But uh, I like my coffee with jaggery. Okay. Coffee you cannot do, right? You cannot do anything with with your natural <laughs> you're saying no to coffee at all i don't know whether <laughs> that can <time>. yeah <laughs> we go step by step <laughs> otherwise we'll scare <laughs> okay sounds good so let me put it this way so co- coffee if you want to drink uh, i think in that spectrum the only thing is jaggery i think so right that's the closest to nature yeah. and uh, if you want to do white sugar because the taste definitely matters um it is okay is it okay to say that it is okay as long as it is in small amounts and also having this health assessment that you are doing a slight compromise will you guys be okay with that no, that's for the person to decide and it's for the person to decide yeah oh. there's nothing wrong or bad or you know judgmental about it thank you yeah. <laughs> that's for the person to decide yeah oh. and i think making that aware choice mm-hmm. is so empowering mm-hmm. rather than being classified as a bad person for doing something or that you're not satvik you're you're like i'm we are superior it's not like that it's like if our teachers didn't teach us the ideal then we would be creating our own sense of ideal and our mind will always play tricks if the teacher said one i can have five or three but if the teacher said this is wrong and if i'm ever having one i'm very conscious i want to so i am but if if i can i would rather avoid oh, so it's a very conscious very choice. very very perception perceptual yeah. uh, choice ah. but this is difficult to Uh, share because correct. people have their own interpretation of what you say correct correct yeah, correct correct i'm so glad that you're having this conversation because that is the key uh, i always say is uh, health is not an umbrella term uh, it has to be tailoring down to your individual needs hmm. so coming back to this wholesome thing i'm not going to leave you alone <laughs> no <laughs> so uh, in this sugar thing so i learned about sugar okay so basically you're saying that uh, dessert replace your desserts with fruits then the question is what is your favorite dessert then <laughs> <laughs> i really love uh, rabdi 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 have you had rabdi it's a north indian dessert yes but rabdi is made with fruits alone no no, no, no. it's made with traditionally it's made with i think milk a lot of dairy products huh. and uh, white sugar of course but we make it the satvik way tell me more. not with fruits with we use jaggery yeah. or dates ah. we make That's what we, we make lots of desserts lots we make kheer not with fruits ah. like we make with uh, we make kheer oh, rabri cakes yeah, yeah. Ah. you know all kinds cheesecakes we make everything i see but we just replace a few things in that so that it becomes better for the body I to see. handle i see i see yeah so harshan shubham i'm learning a lot okay so now i'm going to say that uh, okay so we talked about your, so oil comes here Yeah, it the discussion about oil comes in <laughs> in the wholesome this. category. I'm loving this. Okay, so oil is not wholesome, correct? Because it is not right away coming from nature. So how do you clarify? I think it's a very sensitive topic. Yes. <laughs> Let's address it. Let's yeah. Let's address it and I want to be very clear to the audience that this is just a healthy discussion. Right. Okay. You're telling your point, I'm telling my point from a gastroenterology exactly. standpoint. And the individual can decide. Of course. Ah, uh, what? At want. any obviously. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So food, especially in our Indian culture, is much more than nutrition. Right? It's a Yeah, it's transferred from generations, and it's the, the each family has their own way of preparing something, huh. and it's a very revered way of doing it. Correct. So I think one must be very respectful of these traditions that are passed down. Correct. While they are receiving this knowledge, mm. to see how they can not sacrifice either, but oil becomes one of those sensitive areas. So what we have realized, and this is something, Dr. Pal, we want to safeguard. I would say our community, our society, our generation from the absolute worst that's happening, and then leave it to one's choice. Mm-hmm. So, if we look at if the oil, that absolute danger category is a super refined oil mm-hmm. that has come into our market today. Mm-hmm. And if I explain the way that oil is made, we would not ever consider eating it again or having it again. It's just packaged so beautifully, and the ads are so well made. that we can't possibly imagine what process it goes through 
to reach that oil in our table can you explain so this um, <laughs> The, even no, the this is just a natural process. Yeah, uh, yeah just right before you go into that, I want to just share, you know how when we were discussing sugar, mm. we discussed that there's a spectrum. Correct. When we were discussing living foods, we were discussing there's a spectrum. Correct. So is the case with oils Oil also. Well, there's a spectrum. Mm. There's one which is the purest category. Mm. Then there's a slightly refined mm. but still good category. Mm. And then there's the Super ultra refined, refined I see. category. I see. So in the purest category, let's say the green list of fats mm, or oils, mm, mm. is the whole fats. So eating nuts, mm. eating nut butters, uh. nut milks, seeds, seed pastes, these coconut, grated coconut, this is the most wholesome of all, right? Because we are the less, uh, the least interference Correct. we are making with the uh, natural product. Nut milk product. is like almond. Yeah, uh, nut milks, nut like milk, almond, almond milk, milk, any coconut milk. Coconut, uh, yeah, that's mm. the... Um, purest category of fats. Mm. Then when we go one level more refined, we get cold pressed oils, which are refined. The fat has been extracted from the nut or the seed, but it is done in a clean way. Mm. It is not done in a very uh, synthetic, uh, artificial industrial, way. Yeah. artificial uh, way. It's uh, done in a clean, clean way. way. There's not too much heat involved. I it's see. done in small mills. But explain that to me. Heat makes it more artificial, correct? Yes. Uh, that cold presses, they press it very... Yeah. Heat is not part no of the process. Uh, and yeah. there's no chemicals used to mm, extract the oil, which is the case with refined I oil. See. Uh -huh. So, uh, it's also called kachi ghani tel in India. Cold pressed oil. It's uh, interrelated. I see. Kachi ghani tel. Tell me, me, I don't know. Uh, kachi ghani means cold pressed. Cold pressed oil. I see. So, there are a lot of oil mills uh, scattered throughout the country, small, small, they're from near our house, near your house, there will be oil mill. You take your bag of peanuts, you take a bag of sesame and they will simply grind it in a small, like it will be like a large version of a mortar and pestle and they'll give you oil. In within, within a few minutes, you can see it happening in front of your eyes. So only the fat has been extracted from it. It is still clean food. It is not as wholesome. But it is still clean food. Nothing is added. Nothing yeah. is now explain the actual refined. And then the refined the oil is the, you know, um, that's where the uh, uh, process. Uh, yeah, uh. that's the most industrially made oil. So, so what so this happens? is the refined oil that we see in this yellow thing on the shelf of a supermarket. Yeah, yeah. Uh. even cold pressed oils you will get on supermarket correct, correct. shelves. But it says cold pressed. Yeah, it this will say refined. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only saying refined. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. So it will say refined. So the first process it undergoes is heat. So the nut mm. or seed mm. is heated at extremely high temperatures mm. to begin with. And often those temperatures are, temperatures are even hotter than deep frying foods. So when it is exposed to such high heat, the first thing that goes is the nutrition value from that nut or seed. So extremely high temperature heating. Then to extract the oil from that nut or seed, there's a chemical use which is called hexane. Hexane is a petroleum derivative and a lot of research has been done to show that hexane is also a carcinogenic. The third step that comes, now they've heated the oil, they've added hexane, right? Now it starts looking very black and dark. What would you do to something that's black and dark? Dumped. No one would buy it, no right? Buy, yeah. If in a bottle you see black Correct. oil, would you buy it? No, no, you wouldn't. Mm. So they need to bleach it to regain its golden color, to its clear color. So there's a lot of bleaching agents added in the industrial process to bring it back to its clear glistening color. And then the fourth step, by this time, it's also started smelling really bad, the industrial oil in the process. So now what is done? There is deodorizers added to the oil to again make it appealing for the mass uh, population. Mm, mm. So this four-step process, high heat, hexane addition, deodorization and uh, bleaching is actually what we are left with after this process is not a food anymore. We are consuming it every day, three times a day. But it's not food. It's a highly, highly, highly refined product sitting in our kitchen shelves. We are eating it as food, which is creating disease inside our bodies. Wow. It is increasing a lot of um, giving rise to trans fats. So, so, so I think uh, scientifically speaking, I mean, first of all, I think it's very clear that you have told this so many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yes. Look at how fluent she was. <laughs> Uh, and then the uh, second thing scientifically speaking is that that is where all this possible association of uh, you know seed oils with inflammation with the omega 6 uh, fatty acids is being associated okay so in us if you see any health influencer any dietitian anybody they just go big on no seed oils at all you know this is going to cause you cancer and all those things um it might not be that as bad as what they are thinking but the bottom line is that there is a definite increase in the inflammatory markers called with omega 6 basically there are three two kinds omega 3 omega 6 omega 3 should be high omega 6 should be low this is the proportion in seed oils what is happening is it's the other way around i after you explain this to me i'm seeing that all this process is making this maybe this way um so in after knowing all this <laughs> Yeah. Is it bright red then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean refined oil. Refined oil. We don't use in sattvic cooking. I see. We try to use as much whole um, fats as mm. possible, and whenever needed, to those who need it specifically, we recommend also cold pressed. Cold pressed oil. Cold pressed oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, you cannot cook with your wholesome oil, correct? Of course you can. You can? Yeah, we we use wholesome uh, fats yes. to cook all our food. Example. So the process is a little different, uh. but the end taste is the same. Same. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So I think again as I said, as I said people are so used to first put the oil Correct. then everything else. Yeah. But in our st- st- step the oil component or the fat component comes in the end. Uh. Once the food is prepared at the coconut or the seed on on top while it's still warm and hot so it still integrates into the flavors it's just never directly put on the flame or directly so cooked this whole concept can feel so Correct. alien right <laughs> and one listening will be like what these people are they alien some other world. they live in some other world your spaceship is waiting yeah <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i think to be honest that's what the picture is i want to break that myth i would told you about so uh, it's very interesting so you you add coconut flakes at the end yeah so let's say we are making sabzi huh. right what it's is your favorite sabzi it might not be you might not approve it but potato sabzi potato uh, sabzi all the sabzis <laughs> let's say we we add my favorite sabzi let's say um okay. pumpkin, pumpkin. we are making pumpkin uh-huh. potato sabzi yes. yeah uh-huh. we have a stove we uh-huh. have we put a pot on it uh-huh. so we simply first put the vegetables in it mm-hmm. the first thing we do put the vegetables in mm-hmm. it let them boil let uh-huh. them soften uh-huh. while that is happening we start preparing the gravy huh. so in that gravy we put uh, tomatoes mm. we put the all the flavors mm. the jeera the cumin the so, uh, the yeah the salt the coriander huh. the ginger and we put coconut also all w yeah all ah. w <laughs> all w we put coconut also when that vegetable is now made mm. we put that gravy mm. into the vegetable mm. and we just stir we cook it with that so and then we close the top and we close the flame also so what happens we've used coconut in the gravy we blended it with the gravy so the coconut releases its natural oils into the food automatically without refining it and then we don't need to add oil on top if you come to our home for lunch or dinner we we'll, we we'll feed you the sabzi yes, and you will not for a moment think that this is not having oil because the whole food has released its own natural oil into the food and that's the cleanest source of oil for the body but this can seem very taxing you know when i'm explaining it to <laughs> you but you make it once and your ha- hand gets set wow. onto it okay i'm going to ask from a common man standpoint okay this is, looks good you know palace supporting gut bacteria i'm also saying whole foods and you're also saying the same thing let's come to a practical point okay how long does this take for one food same as what a normal sabzi normal sabzi is. maybe less maybe less you will do less just put the veggies to boil ha huh. make the gravy huh. mix the two enjoy so it's not that it's not designed difficult. to be impractical uh-huh. it's just initially for anyone to make yeah, any yeah. change to take, uh-huh. that's the similar to exercise yeah uh, similar to exercise everybody is hesitant so there's a line uh, which we really resonate with it's by robin sharma hmm. he said any change is hard at first messy in the middle and gorgeous in the end <laughs> So with this change. <laughs> Repeat that again. <laughs> Any change 
is hard at first, messy in the middle, and gorgeous in the end. Then at the end, you'll become Lionel Messi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how fit we should be. Wow, beautiful. Okay, so if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go to US. Okay, I'm going to have Priya, my wife, uh, on board as well, and we're going to cook this thing. Uh, so we need all those ingredients, correct? We so got you our book. We wanted to give you. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. It has lots of these recipes. Lots of these recipes. Super. So I'm going to say wholesome foods, coconut flakes, and then okay. So let's say if I'm at home and uh, doing this, it, it's okay. Um, again, coming back to the practical sample, busy, and then we talked about the spectrum, correct? So you choose which spectrum that you belong to. In your mind, there will be something, correct? Okay. So this is. This needle is going towards this end of the spectrum too much. Um, you guys travel a lot. Okay. During travel, do you think that obviously you cannot do this during travel? Do you think that your needle is going towards the other end of the spectrum too much? Or what do you think to bring in terms of just the oil sabji part alone? Many more people huh. are demanding clean food huh. across the world. Huh. And I think it's such a recent phenomena, and especially in the West, I'm sure you'll see it. Yes. It's much more readily available Correct. than it was 10, 15 years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. So I think we sh nobody wants to go to travel and not eat exciting food or not go out. Huh. That's a part of travel. Part of travel. So we feel there are, if we do a little bit of planning, mm. identify those places huh. that offer such food and in a you know interesting way you can enjoy so that's a win win oh nice that we just check it out online see what's available Beautiful. south indian food is one cuisine that is relatively cleaner food relatively. simple yeah. idli sambar relatively cleaner uh, but south indian has become southwestern now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we don't know <laughs> i'm not even making it up I, you know i do come frequently uh, to india but after social media i'm coming more often to talks and everything 15 years before when I first went to US, that's the first time I saw brownie over there. Yeah. I was like, what is brownie? Oh, maybe it is brown in color. That's why they call it as brownie. The taste is amazing. Okay. And the calories is 250. <laughs> Small piece. I said, okay, perfect. You know, US people always. Yesterday, I came to Chennai airport. Brownie is right in front of me. Hmm. That's how, you know, you see all the Taco Bell, uh, KFC, McDonald, Popeye. Popeye in the Chennai road is, is to the next level. Even Popeye will get a heart attack. <laughs> I was completely shocked. That's why I'm saying that because it is so easily, that sugar cocaine example, it is so easily creeped into to make your restaurant, I mean, not your restaurant, the, the concept that you are saying, the cleaner restaurant, survivability, a little bit more difficult. And that's why people are not opening up that much. I am proposing is that you guys should consider this as well that there should be a chain where similar to how KFC, how these guys are coming, the cleaner restaurant should come as well. Ah, should come as well. I'm pretty sure that 10 years from now, it will be there. It will be there. So we are creating the demand for it. Ah. So it will be successful when it comes. A lot of people try it, but it doesn't work because there are not enough people wanting it. Correct. But when the awareness comes, when you search, you ask for it, ah. then they'll stock it next time. Correct. They'll also realize there's a demand for this. Correct. In a restaurant, I ask for, hey, you know, can you just do a little bit of less oil on the dosa? Hmm. Have you seen a South Indian dosa? Yeah. I mean, obviously, have you seen, there is something called murugal, okay? You should try this. Then you will sign up to my channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Murugal is a crispy dosa. Okay. And what they do is that completely against Satvik movement is where they put the dosa. Okay. It's a white, uh, it's, a, it's a flower. Um, that part is okay. But they pour three, four spoons of oil on the top. To make it crispy. To make it crispy. No, no, not on that. We're done. The process is not done yet. You pour, take the dosa, you know, uh, turn it over. And then put oil again on the top. And then the way that they roll and then they bring it to you as if that is the best heaven on earth. Okay, which I understand because the taste is amazing. My challenge to you guys is that we should come up with something similar with your thing where we rope it up as well and then we say that there is no oil with it all. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's happening, happening, just not at the level huh. in which it's available to everyone. Huh. And that's, I think, part of all our missions. Make it, as, make it as easily available 
as tempting as tasty so no one's a living a compromised life correct but why at the cost of the stomach correct that should go hand in hand absolutely so then a different a curve ball question to you guys so in your case do you do you have dosa at home yeah yeah lots of times you do yeah oil if need be in the beginning so that it doesn't stick ha. but from the second or the third dosa not needed my mom will scold me that i'm scratching the <laughs> 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 that the dosa will not come back <laughs> Quite honestly, we don't get stuck on these things. Mm. Satvik movement is not here to say this is the requirement of uh, oil. Have this much. Uh, I mean, we'll get so easily caught up and stuck up. Correct. This is the Satvik movement is much or Satvik food and Satvik life is far beyond. Beyond that. Hey, did you put oil? Okay, I can't have it uh, now. I mean, that's such a low way of low, saying it. Yeah. But yes, people need awareness mm. so that in life we can make healthier choices. But then eventually go beyond just my measuring uh, it to that. <laughs> mm. And I want to make a point as well as that. you are talking about w i'm going to talk about amount as well because that's a huge thing no matter how much we talk about it always comes into calories in and calories out no matter how much we talk about and gut bacteria plays a role in controlling the calories not all calories are the same uh, for example you have butter i mean uh, your nuts high calorie food right but that's not the same as your pizza not can all calories, but eventually when you all boil down down calories in calories out you subtract more calories more than the body needs belly fat it's very clear okay the amount of oil also matters okay we usually say 500 ml per month per uh, person you just do that i have a strong feeling that you combine this knowledge and with your knowledge integrate together and that's it people don't need me which is a problem <laughs> gut bacteria studies have shown that loves fiber okay and which has fiber plant has fiber so vegetarian diet has fiber does it mean that you don't have doesn't have to do non veg at all absolutely not non veg is okay as well as long as you feed your gut bacteria okay so non veg will not feed your gut bacteria so either you go vegetarian completely which is the best thing if you can second thing is i would say that if you can do when you eat non vegetarian make sure that you have lots of fiber and i always promote that uh, extremes don't work so i came up with this term called don't worry about vegetarian and non vegetarian be a doctor palliatorian <laughs> where three meals a day seven days a week 21 meals a week so you do 80% vegetarian and then uh, remaining four or five meals 16 meals will be non veg i'm uh, a vegetarian and the remaining four or five meals you do non veg okay so for this i got a lot of uh, uh, argument but this is what i strongly believe that extremes will not work and if given a choice and if i can able to meet all my dietary macro requirements put in everything i always prefer vegetarian okay because studies have shown that non vegetarian diet is not inferior to vegetarian but no studies have shown that non veg is superior especially from a gastroenterology standpoint from a gut bacteria so when you said plant based i was absolutely loving you guys already <laughs> so tell me more about it how the principle stands in satvik i think um, we would have to break for satvik mm. per se we see food not just as how you see it mm. the combination of calories or mm. fiber mm. and how our gut bacteria likes it mm -hmm. i see there's one more layer for food mm. we see is how it affects our inner spiritual being mm. and the energy of the food affects us subtly which may be not possible to study under a microscope so i would say that we see it food in that sense as well along with everything else that you shared and um, for that particular reason i think plant based is something very sacred to us very close to us mm -hmm. because it affects the inner being or the subtle being mm -hmm. very directly energetically much more than l and w would wow l and w would remain at the physical level Correct. but this p the plant based component of the food affects us at that subtle level so i think we'll also present it from that point of view yeah and it this is again something which is not i don't know if there's any research behind it how it adds to that energetic being within us mm -hmm. but when we are talking about food mm -hmm. that is coming from animals yes. most of the cases it's coming and uh, 
I'm just going to say it. Mm. It's a cause of suffering mm. to the animals. Mm. It's in pain of the animals that the food is then created. So-called food is extracted and created. Mm. So energetically, that carries that pain, that suffering that the animal had to go through. And when we are consuming it, we think we are only consuming the vitamins and the proteins and the fiber. Mm. But we are actually also consuming the karma or the energetic suffering that is absorbed into us. So I think because we are seeing food in a holistic a sense, holistic sense. Uh -huh. for us eating plant-based becomes very critical. Um, so <laughs> it's an eye-opening thing for me as well, looking at the energy part of it. Um, in theory, it makes a lot of sense, correct? I completely agree. Good. But, but the argument would be that, um, hey, are you completely against non-vegetarians? And uh, if so, what is the research that you have that, you know, plant-based will improve your spiritual well-being? And uh, you rightly pointed out that it cannot be shown under the microscope. Uh, but any evidence based on your personal experience, your experience with patients or any studies? I would say that I've never consumed meat myself, huh. so I would not have direct evidence to state on that front. But I think there is something to learn from history here. Mm. If we look at any of our spiritual um, institutes mm. or science groups, mm. spiritual science groups, mm. whether it's Buddhism mm. or Jainism, mm. or uh, even if we see today the uh, spiritual religious institutes, mm. Mm. you'll notice all of them are practicing a vegetarian lifestyle. So, just by virtue of observing at a distance, there must be some correlation by they are not, at least in India, I could say they are not all, none of them are very, they are very strongly promoting a vegetarian lifestyle. Mm, mm. So, there is some correlation from the, whether it's the karmic point of view, mm. that if you are causing suffering to another, mm. it will end up affecting you mm. sometime or the other. Also, so, to add to that, um, there are, you know about the blue zone? Yes. So, yes. Um, there are five blue zones mm. in the world. One is Okinawa, Japan. Uh, um, tell the audience what blue zone is. Blue zones is where that their longevity is higher, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So, blue zones are these special areas mm. on the map of the world which have the highest longevity on planet mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. So, they have Above the... 100 on average. Above 100, Above 100 on average. Correct. Yeah. Average person lives no longer than 100, 100. in these areas. They have the highest sanitarians, which means that higher, uh, lo very long lives, people are bound to live in these blue zones. And what I found most surprising is that they are not weak, frail, bedridden people. They are vibrant, energetic, healthy individuals mm -hmm. who are living these lives. Mm. So the five blue zones where they are in the world, the first one is, I mean, not in any particular order, yeah. but one is in Okinawa, mm. Japan. Japan. There's another one, uh, Italy, mm. Sardinia, mm. Uh, Sardinia in Italy, Iki Ikaria, Ikaria in Ikaria, Greece. Uh, Greece. Then there is uh, Loma Linda California. in California and there is Nicoya Peninsula. This is in Costa Rica. So these five blue zones were studied a lot and, uh, and Loma Linda University, that's why they did not give me gastroenterology fellowship. Okay. <laughs> they, because okay. I will decrease the blue zone. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So when researchers were studying the blue zones, there were a lot of things they found uh, were happening in common in the blue zones. And one of them which is highly popularized today is the Ikigai, mm. which is that they all have a sense of purpose in their lives, uh -huh. which allows them to live such long lives. But another one was they had a plant slant in these blue zones, mm. which means that 95% of the diet in all of these blue zones they found to be was a plant-based diet. Mm. And we would assume that, you know, places like Japan or places like uh, Greece, Italy, they would have a lot of meat consumption. Mm. But when they were researching, um, there was a research published um, and even a documentary made recently by De Dan, Dan Butner. Yeah, Netflix. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Live 200. Live 200. Where correct. they actually show the mm. blue zones. And one of the common elements they found to be in the blue zones was the plant based, plant -based diet. Mm. But we also feel that this topic is so. Sensitive. Highly sensitive, very sensitive, very mm. sensitive because it, uh, you know, it makes you question a lot of the beliefs you've been carrying since birth, Correct. since 
even like passed down from even, generations yeah. and generations so it's not easy, easy. to mm. change someone's mm. belief mm. or we don't feel uh, that we are here to impose a mm. certain belief mm. on someone mm. all we all we share with mm. our sattvic community is that when we are consuming something let us at least be aware of the process it comes mm. from mm. when we are aware of the process right now we have a chicken um, wing lying on our plate but we don't know what's happened behind it mm. we ask a child that you're eating this they'll think where has they ask where has this come from they won't know that it's actually come from an animal even mm. so we don't know the process even is what i'm saying but when we just become aware of the process then we can make a conscious choice whether this is something we want to continue doing mm. or we don't want to so we feel our uh, role in the whole part is simply to bring the knowledge out and then allow people to make the decision what they want to do how much they want to do but that's what we feel our duty and we feel our responsibility is no no absolutely i think that responsibility is a lot more on me as a physician right when somebody is doing something wrong right so let's say they're drinking alcohol what do we do we say don't drink alcohol stop drinking alcohol and when i say that get bacteria is everything and it's very clear that plant based is increasing get bacteria but even as a doctor i get so much so much push back when i ask them to change to plant based so uh, i also understand that uh, you know people have uh, beliefs and everything and it's very difficult to change but before argument was there was no science uh, but now we do have research suggesting at least at a molecular level where uh, you know this gut bacteria is growing good or bad so i think everything what we are discussing will fall on the same spectrum that we talk about correct and we just give the evidence and the facts and then uh, you don't have to change right away it's just that the concept of introducing more plants somewhere in your subconscious mind will help do you agree i feel a little differently ha huh. we don't make decisions we as in humans don't make decisions based on the research hmm. or based on to some extent what someone tells us hmm. because at the end when the food comes in front of us logic goes out of the window <laughs> it's that in that moment if what is the strongest emotion within us so i feel it's like at least when i learned about it uh-huh. it's very good to learn uh. but i find it a little less practical uh. when the food comes uh. so this is slightly deviating from our conversation no please but please if i have something uh. exciting uh-huh. to do in my life uh-huh. for which i'm so excited to do that that i will do everything else to support that then that goal of mine can supersede my emotions and cravings at that time you put delicious chocolates in front of me i don't feel like i have to stop myself because if i eat that and it doesn't support my body and i know it it will stop me from achieving my goal which is far more important than the taste or the temptation that ever will exist you can give me the reason the calories the logic the fiber but when it's in my hand i'm not thinking but if i have something far more important my hand will drop it so that's emotion for me plays a bigger role as to what i really want to do with my life how important is my energy my health for that goal versus how important is the taste of this but but that goal is usually long term correct uh that long term goal for example for me let's say i want to become lose my fat fat loss how do i get that into the current decision making emotion model you know what i'm saying yeah but if we are working 8 hours towards that long term goal then it translates to all our activities it's that constantly we are thinking about our goal and every decision i'll give a very simple example when the woman is pregnant you tell her to sit down here she will check if it's comfortable for her baby now you will say how can she think of a baby all the time you ask a woman she can every decision in the 9 months is, is it good for my child or not so the child is her goal can we have a stronger goal and this is part of the sattvic principles which i am sharing which means so much to us that no matter how convinced we are logically illogically if it is not serving that purpose 
it we will push it away uh, so my wife follows satvik movement or maybe not name as satvik movement but she does exactly what you guys are saying our goal is to not to have a skin blister <laughs> that is a long term goal she do everything to have a, such a smooth skin okay so she will not eat anything and all those things and when uh, i i know she loves paneer biryani she loves paneer biryani but when her carb content is too much she, she just says no she is able to connect this with this so what is the i mean purpose of life that you you briefly touched upon give me some examples what is the purpose of life you know like do i have to be fit what is fit and do i have to lose belly fat i know we are talking philosophically but i think that is a part of satvik movement as well satvik movement is not just about food isn't it huh? i think again this is something that will um uh, each one will see life so differently differently correct and at each age group uh-huh. i think we see life differently when we are young we only want a bike or we only want for a guy to date a girl uh-huh. and as we become older we only want that job or we only want the salary days so i think our demands and our needs of life keep changing but when we see our own selves i think i'll share from that point of view because i can relate to how i see life mm-hmm. our purpose at satvik movement we see is a combination of two aspects when we combine the two we are most likely going to be achieving our purpose of life is how we see it so i can share that the two components need to overlap or come together the first is what are our innate strengths that are given to us by nature we did not have to work for it for example we find that you are really funny <laughs> you are not trying to be funny right <laughs> it's who you are uh, so it's your innate strength uh, to bring humor in a serious conversation uh, right so that's i'm just using an example <laughs> <laughs> oh thank god you told me that <laughs> <laughs> so we all have innate strengths that we see how we are better at this than other people around us because that comes who as to who we are uh, when we use our innate strengths to and this is the second component to help and serve others around us our fellow humans our fellow animals our mother nature when we are suppo- helping directly wanting to help serve we are using our talents our strengths for a larger cause that when it comes together most of the time will be the purpose we are here and that purpose can drive us so much because we are directly seeing someone's benefiting and that joy is very precious and we are using our skills so it's also easy it's never feeling like we have to struggle or you know go against the flow so when we are able to do that then the temptations of the daily life that come in the way the distraction and the temptations are easy to say no to for that purpose that's the reason we are doing everything we are eating so we get energy so we can do that it's not because we are eating because we enjoy and it's complete in itself i think for me at least that sign that thought that is it going to help me serve my purpose and if not sorry it could be food it could be some th- something else yeah yeah uh-huh. whatever it be because that's the driving force and i think when we don't connect with that then we are left in the moment how we feel every wow. decision is a momentarily choice and most of the time we'll give into the my mind and the taste wow wow that's that's so deep i mean i'm getting very emotional here <laughs> so the i think uh, um let me take it my example okay so i'm an example that okay so yeah many people told me that you know humor comes as a part of what i'm talking right uh but at the same time when you uh, my wife has told me that okay so this youtube thing i have told so many people that uh let's i put so much hours on this whole social media thing so if i put that a much the much amount of time in my active us gastroenterology job i would earn so much money <laughs> that i would have been retired by myself by now but the joy that i get when i do all this you know shows explaining you know all this uh, holistic lifestyle program i could see an emotional connect from the subscribers to me which is the driving force which is the driving force so i have done so much you know coordinating this thing in busy life and everything this doesn't seem work to me and i think my bigger purpose is that which my wife is also super supportive of um i can connect from my end but from a person standpoint from a from a common man 
usually people see my channel uh, for a as a weight loss channel but i feel like it has to go beyond that in terms of a spiritual thing i i'm a very spiritual person i'm not a religious person i'm a very spiritual person so if you have to boil this down to a common man who's looking for being fit how do you combine this being fit in your larger purpose i know it's a very loaded question but i want you guys to give us some guidance basically take it from theory to practical uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is one do today do not today to... or at least uh, at least give uh, i mean just a discussing about how we can okay so weight loss is the goal or fat loss is the goal uh but maybe we can fine tune that that maybe that should not be the goal maybe the goal should be that you should get better as a whole and don't fixate it on this number and see how your energy levels are don't you agree maybe that angle i mean just to take weight loss as an example uh-huh. i feel like it it's only attempting the physical aspect uh-huh. but like you said the way you will feel the energy uh-huh. is what will actually end of the day want you to remain there want that you want to constantly feel that sense of lightness ability to do what you can what you want to do right uh-huh. so i think this is a very relevant question you've asked but you want to share any thoughts purpose may seem a little long term and yeah. people may not even know it and at this moment when they're coming to dr pal's channel their goals itself are i want to lose weight or i want i want to get one. fit i want to get fit okay what is this circadian rhythm fasting okay so dr pal shubha you will not even believe there are so many people that send that okay, i have lost 10 kilos 15 kilos the the reason i'm saying that is uh, when they tell that to me uh, i feel that i have attained a bigger purpose of life which i was not able to do it on a one on one patient in a physician office um so that's why i keep going but the problem that i'm facing now is uh, for that particular patient they are not able to connect the long term so i need something to tell them in terms of okay how do you yes you have lost weight following dr pal channel which we are very grateful for and that's keep me going but what is the thing that keeps you going maybe weight loss is not really that's a bigger purpose to life what are your thoughts on that we feel a great way i'd say we could explain this is say there's a car mm. and the car has four wheels mm. each wheel let's say when we fix our food each wheel is getting pumped um by air the car earlier was dilapidated it was not in a condition to run at all mm. now when we fix our food we pumped air into one of the wheels so that food wheel is sorted when we start exercising let's say we pumped wheel into another uh, we pumped air into another wheel let's say when we fix our night routine we pumped air into another wheel when we fixed our morning routine we pumped air into another wheel so now this car is fully ready it's really uh, like it can ready run fast yes. ready to go Correct. but we've not still decided one very important thing where to go where to go <laughs> where do we take this car we fix everything we can fix our bodies we can fix our routines but where do we ultimately take this car what's the path right. that we are moving towards mm, mm. so same way we can fix everything in our bodies and our foods but if we don't have a clear purpose mm. a clear path mm. then no diet in the world will ever help us in the long run won't be sustainable, won't be sustainable. Wow. and mm. even if we are waking up feeling like we don't have something to look forward to in our day we are idling our days we are just spending our days feeling dissatisfied mm. in what we do the best diet won't have any effect and that's something we've seen time and again in our lives let me ask you a personal question i know we are going very deep but i want to uh, if it is okay with you sure. um what is your motto i mean your destination at this moment we are working towards creating what we call a satvik world and uh, satvik in very simple words is the mode of goodness mm. and that's how our scriptures define it mm. the goodness within each of us is a satvik bhav within each of us the satvik guna 
so we are creating we as in not just two of us the whole community together this world where people are living in the mode of sattva predominantly so that's that thought of wow there'll be a world one day maybe not big world a small world an ecosystem where we'll all come and want to say what's best for the other person before what's best for me where we are not causing any suffering to anyone around there where each one is compassionate and kind so that dream of creating that world which we are inching towards each day is what keeps us going i see um so i think both of us talked about the bigger goal okay because we are in this field but as a common person i don't think we'll be able to relate to this i'm going to come back to the same question where i think they should look health because people are watching the channel mainly for health when they are looking as health i think the summary is that there's a bigger purpose in life only for health more than health it could be they could have a happy family right my family needs to be happy and that might be the destination okay so let's say you are a 40 year old female i have two little kids my husband is working i am working i am like tackling between so many things my destination is i am the driver of the car i want to make sure that the car goes to a happy family where there are no accidents it's to the passengers in the car maybe that might be the destination does will that is a good way to look at your analogy <laughs> yeah yeah um i'll just also bring back the blue zones here huh. because i feel it's um it it's very evidently seen in the blue zones this concept of purpose that we are talking mm-hmm. about and we both found it really fascinating when mm-hmm. we first learned about it that when as i was saying when the blue zones were being studied one common factor that they found was the plant slant there was another common factor which was something called ikigai which was specially common in the okinawas in the in japan that there was no concept of retirement in people's life there in their 60s their 70s their 80s even their 90s they were involved in some kind of work in their lives they had something to look forward to each day they weren't idling their days mm-hmm. out and they had something to look forward to which brought them genuine joy mm-hmm. this th- doesn't mean they were working with you know full force in a corporate mm-hmm. that's not what it means mm-hmm. they could be handling a small stall mm-hmm. in a farmers market mm-hmm. they could be just tending to their gardens mm-hmm. but they had something to wake them up every morning excited mm-hmm. that's what we mean by having a certain purpose in life so let's say if you have to relate it to the audience Correct. on your channel mm. that if you are following the best diet but you're waking up feeling like you have to drag yourself out of bed mm. you're not excited you're not looking forward to your day the best diet even won't work because the brain is not supporting the body then right mm. so these two are highly interconnected we can fix the gut we can fix all this but the brain is just dragging itself out of bed every morning has nothing to look forward to is dissatisfied with the work it's constantly engaging with 8 hours a day how will it keep the pran shakti the energy force of the body will constantly be wasting away in these negative emotions and thoughts so that's why that's um a well studied factor in the blue, in the blue zones, zones. Wow. that they have a an ikigai has become a buzzword today right, right? Uh, yes but uh, yes. for them it's yes. not a buzzword. buzzword it's a deeply ingrained sense of purpose it's a deeply ingrained sense of mission in their lives but let's see somebody's feeling like that okay so i have been that as well you know i have been very down. i don't want to go to the hospital today i'm very you know not even look forward to what is wrong in terms of the brain get connection is not working and how can they change where do they start we'd say the first step would be um it can, we know it this is a very overwhelming Correct. change to make in uh-huh. life because it feels like oh i have to change what i do for work i have to turn my life upside down but what we share with our community also is that start very small 
आइडेंटिफाई वॉट योर इन नेट स्ट्रेंथ इज लाइक हर्ष वॉज शेयरिंग दैट ईच ऑफ आस आर बॉन्ड विद अ बर्थ गिफ्ट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ आस आर लिविंग दीज बर्थ गिफ्ट पैक्ड रैप्ड अप समवेर बेरिड and we are not even looking at them these are birth gifts that god has sent us with and we are working this in absolutely non alignment with these birth gifts day in and day out so someone's birth gift is let's say to sing and they are sitting behind a corporate desk all day they are not tapping into that birth gift that innate strength that god has blessed them with so the first step we say is identify your innate strength what are you here for what is the purpose that god sent you on this earth with one of the purposes first just identify that and start practicing or learning about it even if it's just for 30 minutes every day take out time in your morning or your evening say your innate strength is to write write then for 20 minutes 30 minutes every day educate yourself about it master that topic learn from the experts about it being engaged in it don't leave that birth gift wrapped having dust accumulated on it somewhere deep outside so wow. um that's what we say that and then when you are able to unleash your innate strength the second component of purpose which can feel very far fetched right now find ways that you can serve others through this not just think about me 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 i i i what will i get but use it to serve others okay. through this and that's when it will give you such a deep sense of joy contentment in your life that no food regime can even offer us anything like that so that's why we we feel that having a purpose in life is such an essential component of health of true health of ultimate health not gross physical health only wow nicely put <laughs> nicely put i'm going to do 30 minutes of dancing from today <laughs> but that purpose to answer your question dr paul can be i want to age well so i can play with my grandkids when they are young oh. it doesn't have to be some lofty goal that others look up to correct it could be i want to just prepare the best food for my child mm. and not just be in a rush all day so i can't even spend time and nourish my child with the food oh. so for each person it's it different. has to be but that seeking has to be there what is it for me correct no one can come on a platter and give it to you correct. in a interview like this okay now this is for you this is for you <laughs> by each of us if we look within we'll find something correct. today that correct. is so exciting to do correct correct i i'm not joking dancing is really something <laughs> i've been looking at i, <laughs> I did that <laughs> i did that just for fun i started liking it a lot i i used to do um, co- dancing in my college not i you know they were like, okay this is a funny story there are two groups of dancers the first group of dancers they dance really well the second group of dancers is they pay 500 rupees to be a part of the community right for the cultural program you need to pay 500 rupees just because we paid 500 rupees i need to do something so they put me on the <laughs> second yeah. set of dancing <laughs> but i know dancing or not but i think that i enjoy it i love it so whenever i do zumba for tamil you know kuttu dancing kuttu dancing is where you yo yo honey sing dancing okay <laughs> for that kind of music <laughs> so i absolutely love it so i started with that and then uh, i said that that is my me time ah uh, this is what i enjoy uh, i forget about everything and i go i get trained and then we do like a 30 second bit and i absolutely love it and looks like my audience or they are forced to like it <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry. so maybe based on our conversation I'm going to do that even more and maybe there is something for everybody and they will start looking into it. so it's a it's a deep conversation but I'm going to coming back to your uh P and the W right so P we talked about the plan based W let's go <laughs> W So yes. W is I would say the simplest of them all. Uh, it simply means water rich. Water. Water uh, rich. Uh. That eat food which is water rich. So the whole satvik philosophy actually the word satvik mm. originates from the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And in the Bhagavad Gita these three gunas are mm. described. And there's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita chapter 17 mm. verse 8 mm. which shares the exact definition of satvik mm. food. and in that it says that 
ayu that means the food that increases your life hmm. sattva which increases the goodness within you bala rogya which increases the strength within you is the first characteristic before plant based before anything before uh, wholesome before living it says is rasya in the bhagavad gita rasya the food is juicy in nature oh. it's full of water and the simple way to understand now what is juicy food does no it mean rasya i know rasna rasna <laughs> that's why that the that opposite is okay okay <laughs> no okay rasya 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 is juice with the food yes ah. in built in built in built into the food so like when we squeeze the orange Ah, full of rasya, rasya. right mm. you take a watermelon a cucumber mm. any vegetable a mm. zucchini full of rasya wow ah. and the water the, component within the cells of that particular wow it's not just the juice of it that's ah, not what we're talking ah. and that you can call it rasya food you can call it water rich food you can call it hydrating food okay. but essentially when we say that 70% of, of our body is made up of water we don't realize that we have a very strong need or a, a dire need to com- to constantly keep replenishing this water within our bodies but what are we doing we are eating food which is the actual opposite of that we are constantly eating just food which is devoid of water we eat so much of grains we eat chapati rice dal we just keep eating this all day but little do we realize that the basic need of the body is also to have water in built into our food which we are completely skipping or missing out in a lot of cases super so this is the innate cells in the wholesome foods which has hydration right the like cucumber yeah uh, so uh, one funny example we uh, give a uh, lot of people ask us so how do we know if this is water rich uh, it's like we can't send a list of this is water rich uh, <laughs> take a juicer and put it inside ha uh, will juice come out or not uh, if you get juice from it it's water rich and of course it doesn't mean we only eat water rich but at least 70% of what we eat in a day should ideally be water, water rich. rich i see so there's a balance i see or even let's say you're making your plate right mm. traditionally how we make our plate is we take a huge pile of rice we put dal over it and that's all but or what yeah aloo with it yeah but in the mm. modern sedentary <laughs> lifestyles we live it's it becomes difficult for our bodies to just process it i see if we make half of that plate water rich by adding a lot of vegetables to it for example that whole meal becomes slightly more rasya slightly more water rich mm. more alkaline mm. more hydrating for the body wow and easier to digest wow. consequently so my my friend sarun kumar adds water rich foods okay i mean starts with a alcohol <laughs> <laughs> that's not true <laughs> so so you're not talking about actual water in this scenario it's a component of sattvic food lwpw these are characteristics of the food, food correct yeah. what is something different yeah uh, but if we can have lots of fruits mm, lots of vegetables mm, the body gets a lot of the hydration from there as well mm, mm, along with the water that we drink in the day what's your favorite water rich food fruits fruits what's yeah. your favorite fruit papaya papaya throughout the year I love papaya in the season mango I see. love mango and then oranges apples pears these are great yes. so every day you have at least one fruit at least at least no not so much because it's a checklist ah. i actually enjoy it that's enjoy. why i, I like see. it so every time you eat do you focus on your energy in the, what sense uh, do you focus on your how you feel during eating and after eating because i feel feeling that you know we are so busy that okay so we are eating and then we just leaving right what do you do to see whether this food is giving you energy or not is it something that you do like okay after eating 30 minutes how i feel is something like that i think we are now able to feel it if we eat something that doesn't suit us uh-huh. we'll not we'll feel tired we'll feel sleepy uh-huh. we'll feel perhaps even a slight bit of irritation after that or thirsty oh yeah definitely after a oily meal or a dehydrated meal like in a restaurant uh-huh. so you could need to drink lots of water after that but the point is people are not relating that sleepiness to the food that you're eating because you're feeling it every day all the uh-huh. time <laughs> if a shirt is white and there's a spot you can see it 
If the shirt is spot full, then you don't see the spot because that's how it is. Wow. So I think uh, food for at least for me, it's quick. I can sense the whether it worked for me or very see. fast. I see. I see. Yeah. Um, so we forgot one thing on the P. It would come back. Honey. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I want to make sure that every controversy is about you. You're going to be on Dr. Pal channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's so honey, tell me about that. We talked about wholesome sugar, dates, raisins, figs, or natural. Where does honey falls on this? If it is not W in plant based, welcome. So we believe that our food mm. should mostly come from plants. Mm. Honey, unfortunately, doesn't come from a oh. plant. It comes from a honey bee. Honey bee. So, hence, it's not a plant-based food technically. So, in the Sattvic food regime, mm. we don't include honey. Also, because honey today, with the commercial honey, especially that we get, is actually there's a lot of added sugar mm. in that honey. Mm. But we also say that if someone really wants to have honey, mm. wants to include honey in their diet, then the least we can do is we can take it from an authentic source mm. where there is no added, nothing added to it. But the commercial honey that we're getting has actually a lot of thickening agents added to it. Authentic source very difficult to find, correct? Yes. Very difficult to find. There is a company called Whole Foods in US. Heard about it? Yes, yeah. we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> the green logo. Absolutely, you guys love it. <laughs> that is the only movement that is in US that started like 10 years ago. Where, you remember we talked about how we are creating similar to KFC yeah. and everything. At least they are trying yes. a little bit. But unfortunately, if you want to live healthy, it is expensive. Foods yeah. are expensive if you want to live healthy. Yeah. Because all the processed foods are very cheaper. Yeah. And uh, honey, is that's the one area where we usually get honey. Where that's the least processed one that we get. So, I'm going to combine your platform and my platform. I'm going to say that, hey, you know, if I something that want to get something out of this conversation, I'm going to say that, yes, um, honey is animal-based. Uh, so, if you are leading towards plant-based, if you're okay with jaggery and all the natural sweetness, go ahead. But if you want to do honey, make sure least process. Again, you we are not saying do this, do that. You're falling on that spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then you pick and choose what works for you. Let's say that you are in a store or an area where there is no whole foods, there is nothing least cost honey, you are going to get the processed honey. I'm just giving an example. That is still better than sucralose, aspartame, regarding to what we talked about. I think people should understand that this is this is a this is a platter of choices. And you just pick and choose what works for you and also understand where your health risk falls upon. And that is a very difficult combination to understand. Uh, I'm glad that we are having this discussion to do that. Along with that, I really want to focus on the one thing I really liked about you guys is, you know, we did a 90 day challenge to our audience. And one of them was, uh, so what, 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 what about that? What is that about was we do one challenge every week. Started October, finished by December, so that they have a healthy 2024. That was the plan. And one week challenge was you wake up in the morning, go outside and get exposed to sunlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. I strongly believe in that because sunlight is powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, so sunlight stimulates something called suprachiasmatic nucleus, connects the pituitary gland and secretes your diurnal hormones. Mm -hmm. There are hormones in our body which wakes up at sunlight mm -hmm. and dies down to sleep. And when it sunset, there is a certain set of hormones that comes up. Our body doesn't sleep throughout. You are sleeping, not your body. Your body repairs during your sleep. So I was so joyful when I saw about your morning practices when you were also exposing the sunlight. So please tell us about what is your morning practices are. I think by and large, we can fit it into, for us, three categories. And each one has a different way of doing each category. So, the first, and this is what we also recommend to our Sattvic community as a way to start your day. And the start of the day is a really powerful time. It sets the tone for the day. And we have seen it time and again. If the start is not good, for sometimes you know you sleep late or something, then it reflects on the entire day. So, we now try to be very mindful of the start. Three components or three categories, what we want to touch on before we start our work day, let's say. First is our physical body. So any kind of workout routine or exercise, 
that we like. For me, it's a little bit of strength workout mm. and yoga. Mm. For Subha, it's now boxing. Mm. And, boxing uh, you? No, I <laughs> fully not yet. But I'm very cautious about it because she's learning fast. <laughs> boxing and yoga, she loves it. So we try to include every morning a physical routine. And when we do it, we realize that we just don't feel better. But the energy increases in the day. Very direct correlation. There's a spring in the step. So that's one part. Just to add to that one part, we at Sattvic Movement believe that movement or exercise should not be an obligation ever. It should be a celebration of the body's aliveness. That we have been given hands, legs, legs to run, to climb this fully functioning human body and we get on our mats or we get on our exercise routines and we think, oh, I have to do this. Wow. But if we can change that I get to do this wow. with a fully functioning body, it changes our perspective and we enjoy each movement much more. Yeah. So just with food, right? We cannot see it, oh, I have to eat this boring food. Uh, wow, such vibrant, energetic, colorful food. Rainbow. It's how we see it. Uh, so with exercise, we say, movement should not be a punishment <laughs> for what we ate yesterday. <laughs> it should be a celebration of what we are doing today. Beautiful, my man. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it should be fun. Now. You want to the dance. the first time I'm hearing this angle. Yeah, uh, you want to dance, dance. But don't complain while dancing, I have to dance. Not that uh, don't do it, might as well not do it. Uh, but start the day with some form of movement. And there's some movement each one enjoys. Love, love. Could You'll be swimming, it. could be jogging, could be yoga, could be dancing. Uh, something or the other. Walking, uh, running. Yeah, uh, anything. Uh, so that's one component. Okay. Second, after we've nourished the physical body, uh, we have a subtle body, which mm, is the mind. Mm. We feel we must start our day by nourishing the mind, by learning something, by feeding it the knowledge. Mm. It could be something which is directly related to my work. It could be something which I'm really interested in learning. But at that time, we focus on gaining knowledge. Mm. So for me, there are days when I'm reading a book which is related to certain relations with in, work. In the morning. In the morning. Huh. And when I say morning, it doesn't have to be six in the morning. Yeah, 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 before we start our work. Yeah, yeah. Right, after you, right after you wake up. Within the waking up till and the, the breakfast. Working day. Correct, the whole day. Huh. That time when... Uh, it's important. Some people choose to do workout for one hour, mm. read for one hour, and the third thing for mm. one. Some mm. people do it for 15 minutes, 15. That's a personal choice. Mm. How much time you have, etc. But the second is nourishing the intellectual side of us. Adding that knowledge. So we are growing each day and we are becoming smarter in that sense. We're, we're growing it intellectually. Mm. Otherwise, only if we nourish our physical body, I feel we'll stagnate at that level. Mm. And it won't be a holistic growth. Mm. You want to add anything on that? Just that, let's say, reading or gaining knowledge is to the mind what exercise is to the body. So just how exercise activates our muscle groups, Great. same way reading or learning activates our mental faculties. Absolutely. So to keep them engaged and keep them growing is as important. Absolutely. Otherwise, it will just stagnate and perhaps fer yeah, ferment. Yeah. Huh, absolutely. So, so you talked about movement, reading. Meditation comes in this third. third. <laughs> the third is. I'm a good student. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I learned good. Uh, go the third is mm. nourishing our spiritual body. Spiritual body. Ah. And this is the subtlest of them all. Mm. And each one's spiritual body has a different way to be nourished. Mm. So for some, it could be meditation. Mm. For some, it could be mantra chanting. Mm. For some, it could be studying the scriptures. For some, it could be. Uh, going out and helping the people. I mean, whatever really is that uh, s fulfills their soul mm. in that moment. Mm. Before Helps we start. them connect with their, with their inner self mm. or with the divine mm. is what we call nourishing, nourishing the, the spiritual spirit. side. Like for me, I really feel learning the scriptures makes me feel more prepared for my day. And so so teach me learning the scriptures or reading Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, huh. reading Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And there are, uh, for someone who's from the Christian faith, reading the Bible, Bible could be one way. For Subha, she's recently, not recently, now two years, loves playing the harmonium and doing kirtans, different kirtans and bhajans on the harmonium. And when she's doing it, you can see there's a separate sense of joy that it's nourishing deep within her soul. And that happiness is just only it's just this feeling of wow, my, I'm really 
connecting with the soul within. So that's her morning way of getting that soul nourishment. So when the physical body is nourished, the intellect is nourished, your soul is nourished, you are set, ready to take on the challenges that come in the day, the distractions that come in the day, because the world is full of that. Correct. Morning, you can still protect to some extent. You uh -huh. are, you have that time. So when the craving, yeah, yeah. <laughs> craving comes, you are not in that moment thinking. You gain something. Yes. To prepare. Yes. I think Subha shared a beautiful. Uh, she tells me this way of you know how to see this morning routine. Mm. It's like an archer taking the bow back. Uh. This is the morning. Ah. When we pulled it nice and back, mm. we just have to leave it. It's going to go far. There's no effort in making it go far. So this pulling action is where the effort is and that's done in the morning time. Wow. The day is the arrow that goes furthest then. Wow. Just to add to what Harsh said, that two frameworks you can use to remember this morning routine. One is the 3M framework. Mm. That you need 3Ms mm. every morning. Mm. Movement. Mastery. Mastery is mastering any skill mm. or craft mm. uh, of yours. And the third is meditation. So movement, mastery Physical, and meditation. Intellectual, spiritual. The other framework to look at the same topic, same subject is you need three wins mm. every morning. You need a physical win. You need a mental win and you need a spiritual win. Same, same, same angle. Same. Um. And then you're a winner to start the day. Wow. Uh, I'm going to tell you my routine. Okay. I'm going to see how... I'm not doing this all together. I'm doing this uh, dispersed throughout the day. Um, but I'm going to change from now on. So let's see. And I'll tell you how it goes next time when we meet. So in the morning, my day starts at 7.30 a.m. with my first patient. So I usually wake up at 5.30 and then I do my workout 6.30 and then rush it to the hospital. So maybe with this routine, I should wake up at 4.30. Okay. She, she is. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh itself killed the plan. <laughs> like good luck with that. <laughs> so we wake up at 4.30 and then movement. So movement I'm doing already. Yeah. Correct. And then reading. Okay. So, you know, I love humor. Mastery of my mind. So I'm going to write jokes. Usually all the jokes that I write in my script is I write. So I'm going to write that and then add up to my medcom, medical comedy shows. And then the third one is meditation. I'm going to do, I, I practice heartfulness meditation, so I'm going to do that uh, on, in, the, in the morning. So, super. Thank you. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> and if time is a concern, there's 10 minutes to start with. Uh -huh. It's not about ideal, perfect scenario or nothing. I see. It's just start with where you I are see. at. Even 5-10 minutes uh, where yeah. you are at. Uh -huh. Because when you do that 5-10 minutes and you feel good, I see. you will want to do more I see. rather than somebody else telling you to do more. Any habit for that matter, it has to be first established and only then it can be perfected. perfected. So you establish it. You do it every day, even if it's for five minutes. Wow. Slowly you will automatically perfect it. Wow. But you say, I'll do it for one hour, I'll do it for 30 minutes. Maybe it won't be happen only. Wow. So establish that habit, then automatically perfection will perfection come. Happens. Wow. Perfection is just a matter of repeated consistency. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot. I'm wonderful. We still didn't talk about circadian rhythm. We didn't talk about fasting. We didn't talk about healing. I don't think, you know, the podcast studio rent is only. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We'll have another conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just future. wonderful. Wonderful. I, you are not an alien anymore. <laughs> same, same here. Same to us. Yeah. Yeah. is not an alien anymore to us. So, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up and saying that, okay, so we discussed a lot. We shared scientific, you shared your practices. Um, the one good thing about what you, what I heard from your practice, you're not pushing anything on anybody. You are just saying the facts and uh, if something that they can adopt in a maybe an integrated way, take this, take that, put this together and what works for you. But just, we're just asking, just do something. Uh, start. Start somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Uh, maybe that small change similar to my patient who lost from 250 to 40 was the motivation that they get maybe this will take you somewhere as yeah. well it so, definitely will uh, yeah. <laughs> I can share that. it will just stay there yeah. I always say this is also a, a phrase I absolutely love is be patient so that you don't become a patient <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say um, anyways thank you so much for your time guys I thank you for having us thank you. Yeah. and don't tell anyone you're 40 you're 20 years <laughs> <yet. laughs>
I think it was just uh, so beautiful to be doing this mm. and you allowed us to be absolutely open yeah. and I think uh, we really loved that everything we were saying you were share, you were asking how do you make this practical yeah, yeah. so I think that's such a good sort of prompt from your side right, right. and you are um, as good of a podcast host <laughs> as you are a doctor and as you are someone who makes just spreads joy oh, to everyone it's so nice of thank you, guys. you so much for having us absolutely yeah. uh, something tells me that this is not the first time that we're going to meet in the setup yeah. maybe i'll come to uh, yes. bangalore yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 super thank you guys thank, thank you, you. Thank you.